Okay guys, this is a coaching session on Silver 5 for the Nami. It's misfortune Nami into Ezra Leona. Now, the Leona is going to be quite troublesome for you, as you have nothing to stop the Zerath Blade from coming in onto you, and also level 6 is also going to be an issue as well. Uh, the only thing that technically can stop the, the Zerath Blade on bot lane is your Nami ulti, but obviously the cooldown on that would be way longer than a Zerath Blade. So... You'd have to save your ulti for when you're guaranteed, when you know you're going to get uh, full full on, basically, piled on. So you probably would want to save that to try and counter the Leona's ulti, uh, at least on the bot side. You can actually, in, in this matchup, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but if you give the Misfortune your E buff and she actually kills the minion with the Q, yeah, that she passes through as well, and also... The, if there's any charges left, so be, it, it, hopefully at least two charges left on the Misfortune after doing that Q, it would also apply the on-hit damage as well from the Nami, just to get some more, more damage out there as well potentially. But you're probably looking at doing coin this game just to be a little bit safer, and you're probably just going to want it to be quite safe the whole game, just try not to give any Kleptomancy stacks over to the Ezreal, and yeah, just don't get caught by the, the Leona. Make it so that Misfortune is the only option for you to, for her to go on to. If she does go in, into the Misfortune, then you're probably primarily looking at uh, an aggressive Arcane Shift from Ezreal and looking to bubble that. Uh, and if she, if your Misfortune does get Zerf Bade, make sure you eat yourself. That should be the first thing. And just look, in, look to slow uh, anyone that you can, any of the nearest threat. It's probably going to be Ezreal and you're probably going to want to focus your attention on Ezreal. And there's a small chance as well you might want to get in the way and block a couple of uh, arcane shots as well if the MF does start getting low. So you might want to start positioning yourself after the Leona engage so that you're standing. So it's MF, yourself, and then the enemy kind of thing. Okay, let's go. Let's have a look at the game. Standard waiting in the brush, waiting for invade, nothing happening here. Okay, you come into the lane. What actually happened there? Did you... You come into the lane in time here. Yeah, you try and get the CS, but you got to bear in mind here now, MF is going to be uh, XP behind here. Did you take first W? You should have W harassed there, but okay, doing it there is fine as well. You go blue GP5 as well, so you are going to have to harass a W, and that's going to put you at risk of... Yeah, you're taking a lot of harassment here. So you should have thought about what kind of uh, gold item to start off with. It's not always the best idea to go blue. But so far, it's good harassment. Let's see, Leona. If you can harass the, the Leona as much as possible before she hits level 2, and before she picks up that Seraph Bade, that's your best chance here. And I wouldn't recommend going Q level 2 here as well, because if you look here, as soon as you level up, you get ready for your level up, and then you E yourself here, and then it's like a couple auto hits, that's a harassment maybe on the s here. Yeah, E yourself here, and it would have been just a W, and then another auto attack, or another auto attack, that could have been two auto attacks worth of damage here as well. I think you can't risk going, going Q, and then you might be worried about them engaging in. Um, but I think it's much more valuable to have the slow as a guaranteed because bubbles very easily dodged at this early stage in the game. Keep harassing the Leone, doing a decent job here actually being able to harass the Leone. Leone keeps overextending here. She has the level 2 now though, so she needs to... You need to watch out, basically. This is way too far. Um, if, if Leona had Seraph baited you here, you would have had to flash away. You're very, very deep here, and you're also attacking minions by accident here. You're actually pretty lucky you weren't Seraph baited there. That would have been a really weird, messy fight there. 
Luckily, the misfortune retaliates with a good amount of poke here, though. But you need to be a little bit more wary of the uh, Zeroth blade coming up from Leona. Leona. That's a better harassment, but you can't be overextending that far out. You need to respect it a little bit more. The the uh, Leona CC high ELO, you would have probably be in a really bad situation already. Also, against the Leona, you can't just be throwing out your Qs like this either, because if the Leona does engage. Then your Qs, you won't have a Q. You won't have any CC for Ezreal. I'm just getting some nice harassment here. Try and E her whenever you can, whenever she kind of gets in range here. Like, Eing the MF here, for example, uh, would have been quite nice. Just so that she could land the auto hit. Yona was standing around about here just now. Okay. Let's jump back. So they're getting pretty desperate here for an engage. They're low on HP. Okay. <clears throat> Leona's already come in here, and she's going to just do EQ and pop a W. There's nothing else she's going to do here, and she's not really a damage threat. The main damage dealer you need to be concerned about is the Ezreal. So the first thing you need to do is try and land a bubble on Ezreal, not the Leona. She's done everything here already. As I said before, as soon as Leona goes in, Ezra will arc and shift forward, and you're looking to bubble, predict, or get ready to bubble the arc and shift from Ezra. And also at this time as well, you need to be eating yourself as well, just to slow them down. You actually went two points in W instead of one point in E. I would recommend you to get make sure you get one point in everything here. Because here, for example, you if you had your E up, you'd be able to kite them off the MF here. You have Exhaust instead of Ignite, so yeah, I'll say yeah, you probably have to start looking and thinking about Exhausting here. Seraph Raid from Leon is probably coming up shortly, as she actually flash forwarded here. You need to look at blocking out the Arcane Shift coming in. I would, with you on 4 HP here, and with the Q already on cooldown again, you should be standing in the same line of the Azrael. So the only way he actually gets a kill here is by like flashing to the side slightly and getting an arcane shift in that way. No. <laughs> I actually was thinking that you might do that in your head there. Yeah, always be aware of what the enemy summoners have. You can easily click on the enemy and see their debuffs in the debuff bar. Here, it's okay to stay, kind of. You're very Uno. Doesn't look like you've got cookies in your build, however. I'll have to check what your masteries are after this game. You've got an airy, which is fine. The Manifo Band, it's just... Let's talk about the sec Resolve Secondary, which is absolutely fine too. Just curious to see what you pick taking here. So you haven't got biscuits coming through. Uh, so you aren't going to be doing that many spells in lane here. You should just be trying to... All if since they're not being ultra aggressive here, just try and auto attack the minions and just reset it so you can just go back. This is too deep, just checking out like where the jungler is. Just get this lane shoved in and just go back. Like warding here is like saying like, okay, we're gonna be like pushing up to here and staying here for a while. That's not gonna happen, so make sure you're staying um with your your AD carry, just pushing the lane and just get back as quickly as possible. So ideally, after these two casting minions die, I just go back here. Now you push it up again. And then once again, you just need to get out of your situation, so it's kind of awkward. There's quite a big minion wave here. So you just want to, if they do go in, they're going to take a lot of damage from minions. Just, just to help get this wave sorted out quickly. It's taking way too long. It's giving Lee Sin an opportunity to roam down and gank you guys. After this minion, you best go back. I'd be very surprised if you don't go back. You both need to go back. This wave will stall out a little bit, so it'll give you time to go back and, and buy. Also, Miss Fortune has strut, so she better get them back into lane for XP quite quickly as well. You guys just need to go back and buy and get some refreshments and maybe control order. I feel like this is overstaying right now. Also, with your blue GP5, this is where you're suffering as well, but rather than having coin. 
Last probably about what one minute, one minute and a half. You actually haven't done an, a spell on the enemy champion, so you've been neglecting getting gold here as well. This is where coin would be quite nice. You need to identify what kind of cha champions, what kind of lane situation you're in. Against heavy engaged teams where you need to be a little bit safer, you should just pick up a coin. You'd earn you a lot more money in the long run. Okay, let me watch what you did though. I think you eat the MF there just to give a movement speed to maybe dodge the Zerf Blade, which is fine if that's what you did there. Yeah, that's not like what you're doing, that's fine. Okay, the only spell here now is, is Bubble. You shouldn't be running away here. You should be trying to look to block uh, any Ezra cues coming through. Because the Leon has just used everything on the Misfortune. So you just need to passage her out there. You've got no summoners as well. They just want to prioritize and bubbing the Ezra if you can. Right now, now you have to just escort the the misfortune back to your tower while blocking or tanking some of these Ezra cues here. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. You went forward a little bit too much though. Rather than walking directly behind her like that, when you know she's going to run to the tower anyway, just wait for her to get to you and then just close in the gap. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> okay. So you go back to buy base and you buy two fairy charms and a, two control orders and a potion. I think it would have been better to see you have a, a tier one boots there, just to make sure you can dodge the Leona ulti coming up and the Zeraph blade. So yeah, I think boots and controlled would be a lot better here than any spare cash into fairy charms. I think you have to prioritize frost fang boots are just super important, especially someone so squishy. Um, oh, you've got auto boots. Yeah, I wouldn't do that anymore. Auto boots used to be quite nice, but they're not anymore. Or highly, I think yeah, I, I don't encourage going the inspiration boots at all. Uh, the Sometimes you just really need boots earlier, like in this sort of situation here, we're really having boots earlier to dodge Ezra's arcane shots and, and Leona skill shots is just too important. I think you are gonna might hit a dodgy situation here when they're going to hit six and you're not even going to have boots yet and the boots won't come through yet. Um, it's, it's pretty risky to get boots, uh, auto boots. Let's see how it pays off. Considering you've got auto boots, this is fine. This is a fine build then. It's like MF's DC or something. Just eat yourself and just try and get some of the CS. I would probably ward this brush here now because they're going to be looking to be super aggressive here, I think. I think having a ward in this brush is going to be quite important. If they push into you. Good E harassment. Careful though. Nice double bubble, but there's no way for you guys to follow up on it. Misfortune could have probably altered that, but I think that would have been it. Once again, though, it is risky to throw out your bubbles out randomly like that. You're mainly there just to... Leona has to make the play. You don't have to make the play. Because if you sit here and do nothing, then nothing happens, and then it's just a nice farm off. And MF is, should, in theory, out-harass the Ezreal. The Ezreal, especially with some nice Q hits. And with your E. Uh, Leona has to do something here in order to get this lane one right. So, your main objective here is just to counter the Leona and just peel. You're not actually looking to get a kill here from, from your own play. This is kind of dodgy. I think you can wait a second before doing this. You're doing. <clears throat> you're checking for wards here. I think you need to. That, clearing that ward is fine. As soon as you basically kind of bait your MFN here because you, you cleared that ward and you start walking back to lane and then you do a sharp turn like you're here. MF feels like you're here, but then you sharp turn off and then you go to try brush. Also doing this try brush, <clears throat> nine times out of 10, you need your AD carry with you to kill this ward, okay? So bear that in mind. So 
So you kind of baited your MF in, in here, that thinking that she was safer here. This is usually always a controlled here, and you're always going to need to have someone helping you here to clear it. You could have just waited until this wave was pushed in and then pinged your MF over to help say, hey, look, let's just check this brush for for control ward. And, but like that, uh, even like right now, doing going back for that, you need to stay in lane until this is pushed in and then this is, this is too solo from you. MF might get caught out again, yeah. So Ezra did die, but none of that had to happen at all. I think the wave here is good. I think you need to... There's nothing else you could have done there. Apart from what I obviously said here, you, you can't... The, the mistake has already happened, and then, the, and then the, and it's happened again already. Do you know what I mean? You can't just leave your AD carry pushing in this last wave here by themselves when this needs this wave here if the wave is frozen here like this this is the most important wave to shove in otherwise they can just freeze it under tower and then you have to stay back here and just farm this needs to be shoved in and then you can then investigate both of you at the same time this try brush okay especially if someone such with such a hard engage like Leona and like maybe like blitzcrank and things like that your AD carry is yeah it's probably gonna make a mistake Said Silver, there's no warding backup from your AD carry. Regardless, you just need to pick, use your pings. Like, no, there's no pings used there at all. Um, get used to using pings and telling people to to assist. But you can't just go and do that that try brush by yourself ever, unless they are dead and like, you know, or the waves pushed in, like a big, re relatively big wave has pushed in under their tower, and your AD carries backed off away from the tower then you can quickly go over here and investigate the try brush but that's like literally the only time you can you can do it also here there's no reason for you to stand here now um this is slow pushing towards your sign i believe yeah you should just recall there's nothing to for you to do here just recall and you'll be able to meet up with this wave once Misfortune gets back. And also you don't want to be 1v1 left with the Leona in case enemy jungler comes in here as well. And then your flash is down as well. This is unnecessary greed here. You should just go back and get finish a Forbidden Idol. Get a health potion maybe if you want to. But there's nothing else for you to do here. This is wasted time from you. And risky as well. It's not much for you to do at this very moment in time. I'm just going to be speeding it up until we actually get these mini fights and I can see what's going on here. Once again, you're not getting much gold at all from your GP5. It's 11 minutes and that's kind of like the ideal time to finish your quest item. So yeah, bear that in mind. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, we can look at this. Okay, so. This is quite a deep um, aggression here from the Leona. If, if, if from my perspective, if I, if I saw this, like Leona going into the entire, trying to get into the entire minion wave here. It's either one of two things. She's either being really stupid or the enemy jungle is nearby. In this case... We know from Folk of War cheating that the Lee Sin's over here. But there's a chance that the Lee Sin could be here with that really hard, like, kind of like weird engage here. Um, I think what you're doing is right. You're backing off completely. Um, but, like, I would be wary at the situation here, to be honest. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to do this. There's nothing to be gained. You don't need to make the play. They can easily turn us around on you. You could have died there legit super easy there. All Leona had to do was just ult you there and then you would have been dead like that. You have no flash. 
Um, you cannot be making plays against like that against uh, an aggressive champion, especially with their engage and with Lyrin as ulti up as well. It's very, very ballsy. And there's literally it, like nothing to be gained there. There's no way MF can follow that ulti up as well. You should only be using your ulti at this point in the game to be peeling off or to engage when your jungler's there coming in from the flank, maybe. But like that, that's it. That's it. There's nothing you can get to gain here. Get to be gained here. There's nothing to be gained here as well for the Velkos. You should be telling him to go back. There's literally nothing that the Velkos can do here to get a kill. But yeah, <clears throat> I want to see against hard engaged supports, you don't need to be so aggressive. Maybe if like the Leona had whiffed her ulti, I completely missed. It's the same mistake happening again <laughs> with the try brush <laughs> three times now. You leave your AD carry to try and kill this. You keep getting baited in by this control ward. You should just tell your misfortune to back off. Yeah, you can't bubble the Leona. And you should have been more forward there to exhaust the Ezreal here as well. Your main priority if the, if Misfortune gets caught off here is to, how can I mitigate the amount of damage this Misfortune takes. You've got exhaust and you've got bubble. Uh, Leona isn't doing any damage. She's probably, that W is probably going to land on their Misfortune anyway. Yeah, so... You mitigated no damage there with the bubble, and also you should have pressed forward here just to exhaust the uh, the Ezreal. If you could, could have maybe mitigated that damage a little bit more, maybe. Maybe she would have survived, I don't know, but that's your job basically. And you got baited in by that Triwood three times now. You gotta be a little bit careful about that. I think you have to instantly exhaust the Ezreal here since you have it up and just get in and walk away. Okay, well that Leanna's stupid. One of those side of key things, isn't it? That shouldn't have happened, but you know. Hey. Kill's a kill. But yeah, I think I think you need to think about more what you should be doing with your with, with your champion. Regardless of what you're playing, in terms of like at the start, before the game even starts, you need to identify what kind of enemy team composition you're playing against. Are they hard engage? Are they poke? Are they really passive? Do they need to take time to go up? Can, up, can we engage on them? Like, do we need to be aggressive? Do we need to win the enemy phase? You need to ask all, you, all these sort of questions, and then you need to first think about what kind of GP5 to build. In Nami's case, it's either the blue or the coin. So coin is more passive, and if they got hard engaged, like Blitzcrank or Leona, you need to think about, can I still get gold even if the lane screws up? Blue is always super aggressive. Um, and there's, uh, and, and, and on, on Nami, if you're going to be overextending to get those those gold stacks off, you need to make sure you're not going to get caught out by that. The coin is the most safest and the highest gold generating uh, item in the game. Uh, it's not all. It's it's, it's generally like a, a nice safe pick to uh, to, to, to take, and against pretty much any hard engage as myself, I would take coin. Just a guaranteed. Like if I do get called off in laning phase, it doesn't matter because I can still pick up those coins. Whereas if I do get called off in laning phase, then with the blue, with the frost queens, then you know I'm just gonna be I'm gonna get wrecked because there's no way to get core generation off. This is now what 30 minutes in the game you have finished your quest, but it's literally only on 500 gold. So yeah. Also, before we talked about this this tri ward here in 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 this bush, you can't do this one by yourself. This happened three times now. Your AD's been your AD carry's been caught out. Yes, people might not help you uh, kill it, but you can't. You need to know like when you can go do this ward. Um, you can. As an alternative, instead of just warding this tri brush, putting a ward over the standing here and putting the ward over here um, to get easier vision, at least to see if they're coming through here or sneaking and jungling in from the backside here. It won't obviously give you. It won't obviously give you a vision of this if they come in through here. 
but it's better than nothing and then risking dying or face checking this tri brush. Item wise, I think you're doing item wise, I think it's fine. I would ask, like you to rethink about the magical boots as well. Um, so yeah, think about that as well. And also while you're playing Nami as well, you need to think about what bubbling the highest priority target. So we've already established that Leona, once she goes in, she's used everything. It's literally the same with Blitzcrank and pretty much any hard engaged champion. Once they go in, they can then channel up the next spell in the rotation. And then even if they do get stunned, they will, they will still get hit by that CC. So you need to be bubbling the, the AD carry uh, nine times out of 10 to ensure that there's no more damage coming onto your AD carry. So yeah, overall it's, it's one other thing. Think about taking E over two points in W <clears throat> just so that you can help peel off if they, if your AD carry does get caught off. And I think that's everything. Did I mention the boots? Just yeah, rethink about the boots boots rune option. That's my evaluation so far of any phase. Um because it's low yellow in silver or bronze, laning phase tens can last up to 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna try and only pedal forward towards the fights. Okay, same again. Let's watch you get stunned. Doing ulti here is fine. Now as soon as this wave hits Ezreal, you should bubble straight away over the Ezreal because he's knocked up in the air and he can't get forward anymore. He's already used Arcane Shift to get in. So your priority here again is just to bubble the Ezreal. <clears throat> I guess one item that you could buy in this situation is my cows could be okay against Selena. Just something to maybe bear in mind maybe, but I think Unholy Grail is perfectly fine to take too. Kind of, kind of fortunate that Leona isn't targeting you. I think you're just going to take this lane in face very safely now. It's going to be pretty deadly. Okay, right, same again. <clears throat> yeah, our first thing I would do as well is W the the MF because she's in, in the first thing in range, and then you want to E yourself straight away. Leona's going to Zerf play to here. Uh, you're going to try one, and the Ezreal ulti is going to come in through here as well. First thing you want to do is try and position yourself so that you can block the next arcing shot if possible. You have exhaust up, so your priority here is to once again mitigate the amount of damage that Ezra comes through. He's going to ult and then he's going to arcing shift forward uh, and then I'll do a arcing shot. So, W the MF, perfectly fine. E yourself, that also speeds you back in and also can help you give you kiting potential. You want to block the the Q coming out of the Ezra here and you want to exhaust him as well and try and bubble him. You do block the Q, you do do half the things I do tell you to there, which is good. Alright, let's watch that in slow-mo. Yeah, you can't, you can't focus your bubbles on Leona when she's not doing anything anyway. She's already got everything off anyway. If you're coming here to block this arcane shot from Ezreal is really good and then the exhaust should have been done slightly quicker. It's a shame about this misfortune ultimate though. But you need to keep blocking here though. In case another arcane shot does come through. And you want to be auto attacking this Leona a little bit more when she's under tower to take a couple more tower hits maybe. I think he could have done one more auto attack there to keep her under tower there. I think you, the tower would have done 260 damage there for it to get you the kill. So yeah, focus your bubble attention on the AD carry. That's fine, doesn't matter if you got a kill, that's fine. You gotta get back down though. You need to get back because MF's gonna be coming back into lane and you need to be ready for, for her to come to be back. Draven can hold this by himself, he doesn't need you to... Yeah, just recall now. Don't stay in the lane. you got no mana, no HP. Yeah, this is... You need to think about more when to recall. This is a very late recall. Edmus gonna be, might be fighting a little bit by herself here. Okay, Dragon's been called. You do have a control ward. You sh Yeah. Okay. 
you didn't put a control down for every objective even if you feel fairly confident that it is is safe you need to just put the control down anyway they could easily put a ward over here and lease it and could try and maybe steal it just put always you've got two controls sitting in your bag just put one into the dragon pit straight away there's no reason not to <laughs> Ezra actually did see that <clears throat> blind steel I think yeah blind steel not a lot some act, minor action happening in the river there's nothing for you to do once again you need to be careful now though damage is just going to get higher and higher and higher on you guys so you just need to make sure you're getting ready you just got to be safe here now Just gotta try and let MF have the chance to. All, all your job here basically is is just giving MF the, the the chance to for safety. Same again with the Q on the Leona as well. It's gotta be on the Azra. Also, you you gotta try and use your ulti to counter the Leona's ulti ideally, because that's a half assed engage from Leona and she kind of she got a lot of worth from that. Your ulti being down is kind of huge. Like if there's no Leona coming ulti coming down, then there's no no need to use your ulti. Good dodge on the Zeph blade there. Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> Eating yourself in movement speed was good. You can auto hit here. Yeah. Then back off now. You're going a little bit too deep. Now retreat. You've done your W. There's nothing else you can do here apart from maybe one auto attack for about 50 damage. It will not be worth it. Okay, that's put you in a really bad spot now. Thank God the Leona ulti missed. You can now counter on this, but you're walking into Q range here of Leona. Uh, once again, right, MF is, is taking a bit low, you might want to be careful of Arcane Shift Q. Okay, now you know Leona's ulti down and you got your teams coming in, you want to E yourself here straight away. It's a shame that Bubble missed on the TP target there. Just focus on peeling away and getting out of this fight if you have to. It's not looking like a great start to this fight. Your oom. So you should indicate that to your team and just get out of here. You're going to have to stay now. Ian MF is good. You should be landing auto attacks here. Didn't see that Lee Sin actually. There's two fights going on here at once. So Velkoz has got caught by Lee Sin. I think Poppy is your main priority target here though. You've got mana for one bubble. It's a shame. He did try and save him. I think I would have done exactly the same there and tried to keep the lease him. I think you just got to get out of here now. You've got no mana. Oh, okay. You should be able to kill Leon here. Mm -hmm. All of you are oom though. Just shove in this lane. Just shove in the, the, these minions if you're able to and just get out. You should try and help. This needs to be done a lot faster. There we go. <coughs> So you have every spell up, including Ulsi here. I think as soon as Lee Sin lands his, his... As soon as Lee Sin lands his Q on you, you have to just ult straight away. Um, he's just gonna... He's definitely gonna go into you, considering how fed he is. This game, he's 7-4 right now. You just want to ult straight away. It will block his Q dash as well. And it also will definitely save the, the Poppy as well. I think this fortune might die. Okay, I should use a flash. Yeah, don't hold your ulti if you need to on a harder cage like that. Okay, you need to start thinking about what's the next objective that the team can take. This is what I mean in the low elos. 
The laning phase can last up to 20 minutes, which it has done this game. Good exposure straight away. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It's a shame you got the kill though, but whatever, it's fine. Wait, what are you buying? Not sure why you have a blasting one and an amplifying tome. Also, would have liked to see you upgrade these boots to tier two. Ideally, maybe boots just to help get around the map and get some ward control going. I'm not sure what the blasting one's for. Good little ward clearing here. That's fine. Okay, caught off the Leona. Herald's been used. Seems like it's by accident, but you need to work with this Herald now. You need to, every, the whole team needs to go to this Herald. Yeah. Good. You need to escort this Herald in. Poppy's still top side. Yeah, you've got your ulti as well. So you're probably looking for an ult play here when the Yasuo will maybe goes down. This tower's going to go down to 50% straight away. You're staying a little bit too far back. Alright, then the Astro Wall's down. Uh oh. Yeah, I was going to say, once, that's, once the wall's actually gone away, you can then go in here with your wave. That's quite a big mistake you made there. Escort, keep escorting this in though and keep healing people. This needs to be escorted into at least bash it in one time if possible. It's a shame that's not being escorted in. Hey, so the key, so the key sometimes. Okay, so next dragon is up in 45 seconds. Okay. Teammates overstaying is another problem in so the key. This is where it gets trickier as a support to try and like manage macro manage people all right is that your control does literally about to say you should be put a control in this brush just to make sure <clears throat> that if they engage they can't see you so good job for doing that as soon as Jax dies here you gotta get out I think I think you just need to try and get your team out of this situation yeah you know what I've done there He's been trying to go for a cheeky Q there. I think what you do here, I think you have to be a sacrificial lamb. Because you did get hit by the Q here. I think what you need to do, as soon as that happens, if that was me, I'll just walk back into Lee Sin. Just get, keep him away from your team and just like dub around as long as you can around in this area here. As soon as you get hit by this Q, it's high, super, super, super highly likely to die because you have no summoners and he's extremely fed. So the best thing you could do is mitigate the risk of your team. Any more of your teammates dying here? So just take the Lee Sagan Q and bring it back to him and just stop walking back into them. So just to keep them away from you uh, uh, and your team. Makes sense. I mean, that almost worked. That Lee Sin almost uh, like got the, the Velkos here. So that could have been super, super bad. That was almost a really nice play. <clears throat> Still not sure what you're buying, but that blasting one in the uh, the amplifying time. So yeah, Baron needs some wards, and you've got a couple of wards down there already. One ward here would be good. Yeah, the warding's fine. One one thing I would say though, a ward somewhere in this bit lane would have been awesome. Like even even just here. So Velkos has been caught off. You have ulti. I think you have to panic halt straight away. Focus on getting these two out of the way. The Yasuo might win wall, but it means that the MF can just use ulti soon to maybe clean up if needed. The thing is, is like. <clears throat> if the Leeson stays on the Velkos, because of the time it takes from your ult to get over to here on this very super low HP Velkos, you're just looking at like what can I actually do to prevent these two from pummeling in. Because this Velkos either dies to Leeson or he doesn't, because there's no way your, your ulti is going to make it any difference in tra traveling from here to here. 
your job should be just stopping these two people from walking in and then this is still held off as a 2v1 and it gives your team the highest chance of winning. So yeah, I think you should just ult the Asso and the Poppy from going coming in here. Also, in hindsight, the Velkos would have tagged them a little bit more of these ults units as well. Panic bubble. You need to put a ward in the lane now to see where they're going to rotate. So as you're walking into the situation, there should be a ward somewhere around here to see where they're going to rotate to afterwards. You need to start thinking about backing off and just healing your teammates whenever you can. Okay, this is really good for you. Poppy super low too. Got to try and follow this up. Not sure why you flash though. I know you're seeing this Lee Sin go all the way in, but there's no reason to flash just to even W him here. Your W is going to make no difference in that situation there. Oof, that Lee Sin kick damage. Yeah, it's just a waste to flash anyway. Didn't need to flash there at all. Once again, you still need a ward here. You've still got two ward charges and you need to see rotations between where that team is going. You just need to get back, you've got no HP. Okay, so you lost your jacks. You have you have no ulties, so that would have been the first call of action here. You need to be a little bit more involved here just to help out a tiny bit. Uh, is that Ezra going to do? Ooh, that's good for you guys. You can't really hang around too much here by yourself, though. Just stay in the area, but don't... Yeah, doing a ward there is a really good idea. If you can maybe sneak in a ward over here as well, that would be pretty handy, too, if they keep pushing in. Not much for you to do right now. You've got your wards already placed around in the right, correct right places. <coughs> Good bubble on the Leeson. He is your priority target though, due to him being the jungler. Okay, right, as soon as that happens, control ward in the Baron straight away. And then set up, you got one ward left, so having one ward there already. Okay, so you put control ward here. And you either decide to put a ward here in this pixel brush here, or, or a ward over this ledge. Just so that you know where the enemy is coming in. You want to start thinking. First thing you might know that the enemy jungler is dead. The best player is dead by far. The cumulative kills on the enemy. He has 11 kills and the rest of his team has 4. So effectively this is technically like a 4. 15, v, 15 kills to 4. 4 kills on the scoreboard. You should be able to wreck them here now. So you should be setting up this Baron straight away. You've got this control ward and it needs to be used at the Baron immediately. This is taking way too long and they know you're, they know, they know that you're not doing it. Because you haven't put the ward down yet. Right, this is... You need to use the control ward in your bag. This is... the <laughs> This is the most important objective in the whole game. And you've got a control ward and you need to secure vision of this. Ward needs to be in the Baron pit. First thing. Okay, because you guys uh, don't have your whole team here, you just need to walk away from this and start helping your teammates that are fighting this weird 2v4, 2v3 that they've got going on here on the background. Yeah, you guys have to recall now. Okay, now you need to come back and help. <laughs> the OC wasn't necessary though, but I can understand why you did it. You need to help out here. The Eunice is here by herself. You know, yeah, so it's top side, you need know, dead, and there's two people over here. Shame that didn't turn out to be a kill, but you gotta leave it. And you gotta go recall. And you still gotta use this control ward. 
Okay, MF just died. Is it even more paramount now that even when you're here, you need to go straight to here and put a normal ward over this wall to see if they start barren. Okay? There needs to be much more... Like, initiative as a support to get this objective supported clearly, like, decently. You seem to have been doing an okay job up until this point, and this, this point is probably the most important part of the game, and it's not being watered properly. I haven't really had anything too bad to say about your warding until now. Objectives, killable objectives, especially Baron, need to be warded. If you get hit by the sync queue, don't try and go for the dash. Always try and queue yourself if possible. It's the best chance you've got of surviving. Yeah. All of this stuff's happening without you, so we just fast forward. Okay, so it's 3v5 right now. <clears throat> just gotta do your best to hold off here. There's nothing else to talk about here right now. Just gotta wait for your team. You need to start thinking about how to secure vision from your base to Baron. That's gonna be your main thing to think about. You're probably going to want to put control ward here or use an oracles to make sure there's no vision up for the enemy here. And if you do use an oracles, make sure there's no ward here and ID here. That gives you a little bit more breathing space to get towards the Baron without them like knowing exactly where you are to stop them from doing it. So there needs to be a ward put over this wall. I'm not sure why there has you, you haven't put a ward over the wall yet. You actually don't have any ward charges left now, do you? That's a shame. Should be a little bit more priority. Also, you should try and tell your team to buy Farsight Trinkets as well, or Oracles. So... That would help you a lot as well, so you don't have to face check your own jungle all the time as well. So always try and ask your teammates to buy Farsight Trinkets. Trinkets just ask nicely. If they do, that's great. If they don't, then whatever. It's so key. It's not always going to work asking people to do things like that. But it's not worth asking. Once again, so now you managed to get the breathing space back. There's two things. Again, in terms of warding. So... We talked about it briefly earlier, but there needs to be a ward somewhere in the, in the mid lane to see where they're rotating to. Whether it's the Baron, whether it's a Drake, whether it's the try and split push. Give you lots of information knowing how many people are sitting in mid lane. Also, once the game Baron, it, it, there needs to be a better vision control of Baron. I'm not saying go, go don't, don't go down the river here, just the ward, just pop a ward down. Even if it's a controlled right at the back here, just so you can definitely see vision of Baron, that's fine. You just need something on the Baron. And you... <clears throat> oh, sorry, I only just realised what you bought with the Blasting Wand and the, in the Tome. I don't know why you have a Leandries, but this is not an item to buy as on, on Nami. Definitely not an item I was I would recommend buying on, on Nami. You should be thinking about uh, upgrading your boots to tier 2. You should be buying more control odds with that, and also you should be working towards... Redemption or if the Jax was doing better, Ardent Sensor would be fine. Not so much with the Misfortune won't benefit too much with, with Ardent Sensor, but a Redemption here would be pretty nice as well for team fights. Or if you were super worried about their team comp, I mean there are a full AD, AD team comp, a Zonyos actually could be viable here as well. Something to bear in mind as well that they're full, they're full AD. You usually don't buy Leandries, uh, you should go Twin Shadows into Ardent. Twin Shadows can be okay to help kite off, for sure. I, like, usually Twin Shadows is good for catching people out, and I think this game you're more, you've are more you got enough catching here anyway with the Jax, your ulti, Jarvan ulti. So there's, there's enough for you to be able to catch up on them quite quickly. I don't think Twin Shadows is required, you know, I know you didn't buy here. 
I can kind of see why you might want to buy it just to catch people out easier with the twin shadows. It could be a fine item to take on Nami. I just feel like with the amount of healing power she does with the Unholy Grail, having the extra healing power as well from Redemption and the... Uh, the Ardent Sensor, if you do, if it is a viable pickup, it just scales, it scales too nicely, basically, with everything. It's one of the reasons why Healing Power got nerfed slightly uh, a few months ago. But it is still incredibly strong, and it also affects your area as well. Okay. Your team's doing a really nice job here, picking off the backline. This needs to be more urgency here. If you had Moby Boots, you'd be able to get into this fight a lot quicker. Not in position here at all. Alright, I want to see why you ult them. Went for two. Alright, let's start again. So what actually happened here? Ezra gets mega caught out on the back climb with Jax waiting here. There's a really clever s attack here. And as always, Lee Sin is the like main main damage dealer and threat. You should as soon as soon as you've identified this, you should have been walking from from this brush down to here to help out. I think your pathing here is all bolt. Okay, this fight's progressed in a little bit longer. You're way too far away to ult have any ult contribution here at all. I wouldn't have bothered ulting yet until maybe here where you are now. And then here you could have done a diagonal ulti over into the river. You're missing every single skill shot right now. You need to turn around right now. You cannot be the front lane here. Miss Fortune might be looking to make an ulti play here. So you need to get back in. Look closer. Not too far away. All the way at the back though. It's too far away. But you need to be identifying that this Miss Fortune should be looking for an ult play. No, this is better, yep. The bubble's about to come up all down soon. Okay. Not sure how. It's a shame Miss Fortune got, got caught off there. Can you assist her? Wait, where are you? What happened here? As soon as the MF gets caught out, you should be trying to help her. It's like you didn't realize, or you're scared of the Yasuo. You got exhaust and flash. <clears throat> Even if the Yasuo goes onto you here, you can still exhaust the Yasuo. This pathing's really bad. Yeah. Pathing in both of those instances were really bad. When you were here, the closest for you to assist was just coming down the straight line down here. And also, like, standing here, baiting the, the Yasuo to go on you is fine. Uh, you have both your summoners up, the exhaust and the flash. You could, If the Yasuo did jump onto you here, you could have just exhausted and if you feel situation and healed yourself. And if the situation was looking worse, you just flash towards the Velkoz and work as a 2v1. I assume you're going to die now. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be tier 3. Tier 3 for Yasuo. Okay. Now they have one death timer of 40 seconds plus. He sacrificed himself to get to tier 3. You need to Leroy the Baron. You should be telling your team to Leroy Baron straight away here. It's 4v5. There's no pings. There's literally no pings coming down to the Baron. So you should, as, as a support, I know it seems it might seem a little bit weird, but you should be calling out for objectives a lot more. It's either the support or jungler that needs to be mainly doing it because they should, they should be the most in in tune about what to be doing on the map. So yes, junglers should get priority in short calling where they when when to do these sort of objectives. But to be honest, in solo queue, junglers are pretty lazy to call for these things. So you need to direct your team. I think let's say look, yeah, so it's dead. Spam ping Baron, go, 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 make it urgent and just start like charging there straight away. Nine times out of ten, you'd be kind of surprised at how many people actually follow and usually it's most of the team. And it would be a fine call because you would be able to get to clear out this entire vision around the Baron at least anyway, which is still extremely important. Like, for example, there's no reason for you to be like clearing out this 
dragon bit area you want to process. Valkos is doing your job basically right now on clearing out the Baron pit. And he didn't even clear it out properly. <laughs> they still have decent vision of the Baron. <clears throat> your team splits up here again. Um, you've got another kill on Yasuo. Yasuo is now dead again. You need to be a little bit more urgency coming up into here. You and Nemeth are coming up now. This is really nice here. That's a good bubble and a good ulti. This should be Baron straight away. You should control it on the Baron. Doesn't matter. I just use your control ward on the Baron straight away. I know there's only Ezra alive, but it's, it's not worth the risk of a of a. If he can actually, if he actually did have vision of this, and if he stole this with ulti, it would be pretty tilting, right? It's just not worth the risk. Your job, unless you're like Zyra or Zyra or Brand, your job as a support on Baron isn't to do damage to the Baron. It's to keep people topped up if needed to, and just make sure that there's no way for the enemy to steal it. So controlled here. Uh, I would put a ward over this little ledge here as well, and probably put a control ward here as well. Okay. Because you're probably contributing about, what, 500 damage to Baron there? Which isn't anything. It's just auto attacks and ease. Good pick up here by Jax. Okay, this is a really nice pick up from here from Jax. Just want to make sure you get out of here. And you need to identify the fact that yeah, Jax just went from Baron to Dragon by himself, and he hasn't gone back to Bar yet. So you should be calling people to get back. You just did. You did a ping back, which is good. But <clears throat> there should be more urgency not to fight. This this is like too far already. You should just be. I know it's hard sometimes to wait, but yeah, you're putting yourself in a really risky situation here for no reason. Just get out of here. Jax just went back. You saw him recall. You've used your ulti now for no reason, and you're kind of edging back in, into this fight. Just get back with your team and regroup. There's no point throwing this away now. This is going to be really bad. Okay, you didn't react at all to the poppy walking into you there. Need a little bit more awareness of what's happening here. Plus you have four ward charges here as well. You can easily ward that brush over here. From from where you're, almost where you're standing. Closest to the wall. You can just ward to the tri brush there. If your team wipe here, you I think you've cost your team the game. Falcons did a valiant effort there. Jarvan's doing a valiant effort as well. I'm sorry to say, but you've just thrown your team's Baron. Yeah. Should have identified that the Jax did a really nice job going from Baron to get the Infernal Drake. Then there should have just been like, okay, just wait to group up and get get the just group up, get to their base as five and just finish off the job now because you you're almost there now to victory to be honest. And that was a very, very silly mistake. Just to get caught out like that. You can still be super aggressive now, since they now have a 50 death timer on their best player. <coughs> you can actually try and Leroy one of these down these lanes. Probably bot lane would be pretty nice. Encourage the MF to stay here. Yeah, you are pinging down for assistance here. That's a shame. Yeah. I think Baron's going to be wasted now. You all kind of need to group her up with the, the MF, regardless of where she is, just so you get used to, you can use the Baron buff. MF's still bot side. You shouldn't chase this. It's a really nice Dark Horse ulti, though. I'm not sure what you flashed away for from, though. Considering this is a 4v4 with that MF, it's going alright. 
You want to quickly divert to mid now. There's no point chasing down the map. Straight away, your next focus needs to be pushing down minions so you can actually get an objective from this play. This is chasing a little bit too hard here. Good job setting up wards in the enemy bot side. Getting ready for a push in, that's very good. Okay, you should be trying to group up with the Jarvan here. He's at the, the most risk of di dying here. He's overextended here on the bot side of the map. You can save him, you've got your ulti, but you need to get out of here though. Valiant effort at, at ulting, but you can't get too involved in this matchup. Jarvan's now, now at so you can't EQ away. There should be a few more pings saying retreat and then just leave it. Can maybe put a ward here as well. Yeah, the Asu already, did, uh, the Jarvan already did though, but that's fine. And MF kind of wants to come in for the flank here. I think you're gonna have to play with it. If MF does come in for the flank here, which she is, I think you're just gonna have to get yourself involved back in again. It's a pretty bad move, but you're gonna have to like sort of follow up on it a little bit here. You have to continue helping out here. You are going Oom. If you didn't have Leandries, you would have the mana regen for this. Okay. Meanwhile, I lost mid in him. More dragon spawning is Elder Drake next. You need to be with your team here. You're by yourself again. Okay, <clears throat> they just killed Jack, so they're probably going to try and get either the Elder or the Baron as soon as it spawns. Okay, mid and hips are already down, so you've already got that pressure. So you're going to have to stay mid and think about how to get vision on them to see which kind of objective they're going to. This is why having these wards in the mid lane, which you have done this time, is really good to see rotation. So you should be able to see which way they go and follow up based on that. Just from that one ward that you've got there, it's really nice. So you can't tell exactly where they've gone. You've used Twin Shadows here. Wait, wait, wait. What's happened here? You've got to bear in mind Jax is dead, so you don't want to go overkill for this. So Jarvan's just used your, his ulti and the Lee Sin already flashed out of it. That's actually a pretty nice ult that you managed to clip on here. I wouldn't personally have ulted here, though, because it was extremely risky that it was going to land anyway. Ooh. At least in... Massive. Once again, it looked like you're trying to bubble the Leona for when she comes in. It's just not worth it. Once again, you need to be focusing on whoever's dealing damage with those bubbles. Lee Sin might actually get caught off here. Once again, you need to think about the Jax is still not with you. This is now too deep. This is probably going to end badly. Yeah, sort of caught off there. Gotta think about who to exhaust here. It's a shame the bubble mess. Exha you need to exhaust the, the Astro straight away there. Your exhaust is up, and the, the Astro should have been exhausted straight away. You would have maybe have survived there. I don't know, but it would have delayed the Astro a little bit longer there. Okay, we're gonna have to skip forward here because you're dead. So, whatever happens, happens here. Okay, so that fight's lasted a hell of a long time. MS that aim. You're coming in. If you've got Twin Shadows up, you should get ready to use it soon. <clears throat> Once again, you're on a killable objective. This needs a control ward. You're doing Elder Drake and there's no control ward here placed. And you're... You need to help. I know this is a bad call. This might be a bad call, but you need to help on it anyway. If two people are doing it anyway... I mean, you got no smite. I think that's the main issue here, right? You 
to help out here a little bit. Okay, get ready for a wave. Yeah, you always have to try and wait for the Yasuo War to happen first. So they picked up an Elder Drake. Would have been so nice if you had your ulti there, actually. Okay, you're dead again. Yeah. Thinking that's going to be game now, right? Yeah, that's game. It's literally nothing else to talk about here. It's, they're just going to end the game. You can tell from the graph. Okay, guys. Okay, so. Jax is not on jungler. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that. I don't know why the Jarvan was topside. That was a shame. I mean, it was a bad call, but I think at that point, once the <laughs> once the trade had gone that low, I mean, you need to start thinking about how to prevent them from getting in. So things like the control ward here, for example, so they didn't have vision of the Elder Drake. Um, continued vision of the Elder Drake was super important. That should have definitely have been a control ward in in the in the Elder Drake pit, similar to how you should have had a control ward in the Baron pit as well. Um, that is something that is paramount. What you should be doing with your control wards. Overall, though, apart from the, <laughs> the key objectives not being being uh, contr control ward, it, your vision your wards are generally decent. It's not there's not they're not too bad. That they're on the better side of things, especially considering your silver five. So just make sure you're control warding the actual objectives themselves, so they can't even be like taken or competed over properly. So they have to kind of guess when to go in. Is um, super super important. Okay. Now, in terms of your Nami build, I absolutely hate it. You've got Sorcery Shoes, and you've got Leandries and Twin Shadows. Really start to think about, like, Unholy Grail is fine. If you've got a Hyper Carry that's doing particularly well, maybe you want to go Ardent Sensor first, and eventually you will want to buy one for, an, for a Hyper Carry. Like, for example, this situation, the Jarvan and the Jax could easily use it. The MF kind of is not nothing too crazy for her, but it can still be usable as well. <clears throat> the Leandries is a big no no. N never go never go Leandries on, on Nami. You don't need the extra damage here at all. You've got literal five four DPS on your team as well. Um there's no there is no need for it at all. Just go Unholy Grail, Redemption, then pick up an Ardent Sansa, Moby Boots on the instead of Sorcerer Shoes, in my opinion, just to get around the map. Is super important as Nami uh, and as most of the supports really if you can pick mobility boots then go for it because it just helps you get around the map and ward and make sure you can ward quickly as possible also you need to start thinking about bubbling higher priority targets you keep trying to bubble like Leona mid dash there's no way you're gonna land like you need to preemptive that that sort of bubble because no way you can like get a Q mid dash like unless it's fluke right. And also you shouldn't be trying to bubble a Leona. You just need to think about what kind of high priority targets to pick, and then uh, what ones are going to do the most damage that aren't going to make you overextend too much and just try and get them bubbled. Against the Yasuo as well, you're going to have to think about his wall a little bit more. He you I think you altered three of his Yasuo walls. Usually in the game. Usually it should be one, two, unless he's specifically holding his, his wall up for your ulti. Or for the misfortune ulti, then you just need to have to you just have to be a little bit more patient on your ult sometimes. Um because basically you used your ult. I think every time Yasuo bogged it, his wall was already up. So you should have already identified that already. So his wall was already up, all we had to do is wait another two seconds and then you would have had your ult free. And then in a couple of those fights it would have been super handy too. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a this decent amount of information there that you can take back and hopefully that helps you in your game. Okay, thank you for the game review and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you guys have got anything else to add, feel free to add it in the comments below or in Twitch chat. Right. Thanks for the paid session, man. Appreciate that a lot.